Welcome to Farnborough 2018, the largest aerospace event in the world this year. And I tell you what, it started off with a great boost for the home country. UK Prime Minister Theresa May opened the event as the UK government pledged half a billion dollars of government and industry investment for R&D and productivity improvements, as they said, to transform the future of civil aerospace and continue the UK's status as a pioneering aerospace nation. Well, one of the beneficiaries will be Rolls-Royce, who today gave a thumbs up to those aspiring to an urban air taxi market as it announced its propulsion system from an electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicle, which can carry four to five people. We know that the future of aviation will be influenced by electrification. We expect to see that happen in two forms, evolution and revolution. And what you're seeing here is one of the examples of revolution, the use of electrical technology to allow people to fly around the skies in a totally different way. This year's show is seeing a greater emphasis on space and the UK announced its first spaceport at Newquay in southwest England. The newly announced partnership between Spaceport Cornwall and Virgin Orbit will provide horizontal satellite launch facilities. Space was also in focus for the US Pavilion, by far the largest of the many international groupings at Farnborough. Apollo 15 commander Al Walden presented the RAF on its centenary with the American flag that had been flown to the moon. It wouldn't be an air show without a whole slew of orders coming from the big manufacturers. Boeing led the day with $13.7 billion worth of orders. They sold freighters to Qatar and DHL. They sold 787s and they passed the thousand mark for the 737 MAX. Airbus did $9.2 billion just for Asia. And Embraer got in the act, selling more of its E-175s than United. And while there's a lot of speculation about the possible Boeing 797 launch, at today's Airline Chiefs Roundtable, the airline lessers are not too keen on more choice. There's just too many airplanes at the moment. If you look at Boeing, for example, we have five new 737s. A Max 7, a Max 8, a Max 9, a Max 10, a Max 200. The market isn't there for five of them. There's too much customization. There's too much reaction by the OEMs to what the other guy's doing. You can't just build an airplane because the other guy's building one. You've got to build one that you feel your customer base really needs and wants. Techover launched a new eight meter wing UAV and showed its capability via a live stream from an ongoing operation over the Atlantic, even allowing show visitors to take part by controlling the drone. In the defense sector, Saab said it's confident that the second and third test examples of its Gripen E will fly soon, as it continues development work with the first aircraft. So that's the highlights from today's Farnborough Air Show, but there's been a lot more happening as well. If you want to know, for example, about Garmin's new kit for the military in conjunction with L3, or you want to look inside the AW101 doing search and rescue for the Norwegian Air Force, then go to our website, wearefin.com and we'll see you tomorrow.